Yes, 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 yes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm a flex for a second, but it's for a point. It's not to brag or show off. I know a lot of you probably have more money than me. This is $16,000 in $100 bills. I'm gonna show you something of what, I, I need props, that's real money, but I wanna show you the simplicity. Now I'm mostly teaching stocks, but I want you to understand why we're doing stocks. I want you to understand why I talk about real estate. It's the, the blueprint to, the blueprint is simple to millionaire math, and that's what I'm going to show you. It's just time plus amount plus yield. How long you got, how much you're putting in, and what's your return. You can control your yield based on the type of things you invest in, your asset classes. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you on the screen my asset classes. So I primarily invest in three things. Business, my business, real estate. These are my properties and then stocks. So here's all my stock accounts, right? So these are the 42 different stocks that I own that produce $2,500 to $3,000 a month in cash flow. These houses produce about 11,575 or 138,000. So combined total, we're looking at about 160 something thousand dollars. Now that's assets, that's not my net worth, like my home and my cars, I don't even count that shit. So what I'm trying to do is get to $5 million of investable assets that are paying me cash flow. So I wanna be paid money every month that I own things. I want money coming to me, make sense? So I believe that anyone, if you put in wherever, whatever your race, your financial situation, whatever you're at right now, that if you put in seven to 10 years of investing 40 to 50% of your income, you can get rich. Now, people will say, well, I can't do that. I know. You got to make more money. I didn't say this shit was easy. So the way I did that is we lived on my wife's income, and then I had a, a part-time job, and we lived on that. Now, wages are fine. Wages are honorable. Wages are how you pay your bills, but it's profits that produce, that make you rich. Profits. So you have to take your money from work and you have to produce, put it into things that produce profits. Here's an example, AT&T. Now AT&T will pay you, think of this. So right now AT&T is $2,700. So that means one, or 3,700, one, two, three, four. So we need 37 of these. Let's just say about like that. You put that into AT&T, that money's gone. You still have the money, it's just over here. It's now been converted from cash to equity. Make sense? And so you wanna get rid of your cash. That's why when they say cash is trash, you need to put it into things that produce income. Now AT&T will pay you 50 cents. So for 200 shares, $6,000, they'll give you one of these right here. Now let's say that you had, uh, uh, you know, if you had double what I have here, which is $16,000, that gets you what, almost 1,000 shares and they would pay you $500. So every month that you held those shares, you would get five, or every quarter, you would get $500. Or in other words, you would get $2,000 a year, which would be, what, 20 of these. You'd get that every year. Well, the goal is, the goal is, and let's see how much, how much do I have in AT&T right now? I'm down to a core position because I sold some. So I'm down to only eight, 9,800, and I had almost 16,000, but I also own Verizon. And so between the two, I was getting about $2,000 a year in $100 bills that I then push into more stocks. So when a company pays me, I reinvest it. And when they pay me, I invest it. And when I pay me, I invest it. And I just keep investing. And so I started this journey 18 years ago with one house and one stock. And the house that I bought first is this house right here, right here. So 18 years ago, I bought this house and I paid about 40 something thousand dollars. Again, 18 years ago. So it's like buying an 80 or $90,000 house today. And it was really beat up and it was bad and I had to move the renter out. And I think I was charging 425 a month for rent. And you can see today we charge 850. The home is long paid for by renters. I didn't pay for it. 
other people paid for it. So this is what they mean by other people's money. So to acquire this house at the time, I had to put 20% down. And that was about $8,000, which is about right there. So I gave them this money, equivalent to eight grand, and now the money's gone. Cash is trash, remember? So that money's gone. So I had eight grand in this house. Today, this home is valued at approximately $125,000. So my $8,000 is now worth, and I don't have a mortgage, $125,000. That pays me eight fifty dollars a month. So after taxes and insurance and repairs, let's lay $100 a month aside for repairs. We got our taxes. I'm gonna keep about $400 every month, which comes out to what? Oh, about $5,000 a year. Every month I own this, one house. Now remember, AT&T was throwing me off a couple of these too, right? And so you begin to see how it starts to pile up. The money just starts piling up. And then what do you do with the money? Well, you don't consume it. You don't consume it. You push it into more assets. So this is called the power of compounding. Now, some people will poo-poo compounding. Well, the problem is, is this time. It takes a long damn time to compound. But you can control that. So if you ever look at a compound curve, this I call this my millionaire blue. I teach out of this on Instagram sometimes. So if you see all these, these were videos that I did, banks, appreciation. Let me back this up. Showing people. Body, being, balanced business, health, wealth, mindset. These are the ways that I was making money. So, you know, this is my book. This is, I write in this of how am I going to get wrecked? What you're seeing is notes that produced the, the $2 million in real estate and the 500 something thousand dollars in stocks. All this came from this book here of me writing down, learning. So, Anyway, the, if you ever watch a, a, a yield curve, it goes like this, compound curve, right? Well, what I figured out is, why don't I just start here? So instead of spending years and years and years and years and years ba investing baby money, 200 bucks, 200 bucks, 200 bucks, instead of doing that, why don't we just invest $2,000 and then jump ahead, and then $2,000, and then $2,000, $2,000, and let's get over here real fast, because then it starts going up. And so when you have, you know, like I have 15 houses, two, two I use for personal business, so my business pays those, but you're collecting $138,000 a year in rent, and then you're collecting twenty-five dollars to $3,000 a month in dividends, and your portfolio's growing, and you push all of that back in, plus you're working and adding money, what happens here? Exponential growth, right? And so you get where you're sitting on $16,000 in cash, just for fun, just for fun, for you know, just to have some emergency money. But it's not my money, I didn't, it's not my money. That's, that's other people's money. It's AT&T's money. It's Verizon's money. It's renter's money. It's not my money. And so every month, I collect about... And I'm just one little guy here. So what is it? About 14000 So if we remove, I don't know, about this much, we're guesstimating. That much money has nothing to do with work for me. It just comes in from investments. So a big old stack of money every month is just delivered to me. Now, it's not delivered in physical cash. Some of it is, some of it is delivered in physical cash. It's just delivered to me from assets, from investments. Because I worked, I would work, and I'd get paid. Well, let's say I got paid you know, $500 on a job, I'd save the whole $500, the whole thing. For seven to 10 years, I saved 50% of my income and I pushed it into houses. The houses then gave me cash, which I then pushed into stocks.
And so then now the stocks are growing, you know, two to three thousand dollars a month just in dividends. Not counting if you see like the stock market's up twenty one percent on the year. Well, guess what happens when you have five hundred thousand dollars in the stock market, and the market just goes up twenty one percent? Well, what is that? That's a hundred thousand dollar increase in just asset price. It's not counting the dividends, but you got to get to the five hundred. So that's what I'm saying. That's what this is. The millionaire math is time plus amount plus yield. You can control time by the amount that you put in. You can push yourself ahead of the curve. You can push yourself into the curve. And yield, well, yield's controlled by what is it you're investing in. And I'm going to show you some compounding in real time. So every month, I print these off. I print off every stock I own and every account. And at the top, I write how much am I collecting in this account in dividends. How much am I collecting in this account in dividends? How much am I collecting in this account in dividends? This is an experimental account. I'm trying some new strategies in. How much am I collecting? How much am I collecting? So you, you get my point, right? And these 42 assets throw off that money. And then over here, I print off all my houses and I write, what are my taxes? What are my insurance? How much are my repairs? Any notes I may need to know. And I do this every single month. What you think about comes about, what you focus on grows, what you can visually see and put your hands on, right? is going to produce money. You, can, you gotta let this, you gotta stay with this. And so this originally started with one stock and one house, right? So each one of these, I had to come up with a big pile of this. So I had to be willing to go broke. So every house that I bought, you see these are small houses, 800 square feet, 900 square feet. When I would buy these, I would literally go completely broke. I would saved all this money and now I'm literally broke. When I say broke, I mean broke, no money. Meaning I have to make money in order to fix them. I bought houses and the house set for five months because I didn't have the money to work on, okay? So every month as I make money, I go broke. I get rid of it. And here's what happens. I still do this today. If you, right now I have about $118 in checking and I'm worth millions of dollars. Now, to some people, you're going to say, well, that's crazy. I'm trying to get to $5 million. I don't have time for bullshit. I can't keep my money. I have to invest it. So you see the date on this one? I've been doing this every day for 16 years or every month. The date on this one, 4-30-19. The date on this one, 11. For, these are from my printer. So look what it says for... I, I had cross through because last, the previous month, I collected 10277 in rent. This month, it jumped to 11105 And you say, why? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, you see I do all my own work and remodel and repairs. I was able to remodel and raise the rent. So I took $10,000. It's usually about what I'm average. I remodeled the house and I raised the rent $200. I literally just did this, if you've been following my stories on this house here. $10,000 would be about, I don't know, about like that. Yeah, about 10 grand. And I was able to raise the rent $225. That's a 20% cash on cash return. So you see rents going up. So this is, of course I did it on this one, but this is dated 11-4. So here, fast forward, what is this, six, seven months? And what do you see? It went from 10, seven, seven, and this month to 11,004. Now it's 11,575 for total rent collection of, of what? 138,000, what was it here, 133,000. So in seven months, what happened? Look at that increase, you see that? That's like $700 a month increase. That's my cash flow went up, why? Reinvesting my money back into these properties, raising the rent, and guess what that means? I can then push that money into what? Solid dividend stocks, ones you know all about, Exxon, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, uh, Ford, Right? I push these into quality companies. You know these companies, Pepsi, Southern Electric, Verizon, that's a mortgage read, Blackstone, the one Grant Cardone's always talking about, McDonald's, Chevron, the cigarette company, Altria. This is a, a, a assisted living for elderly people, right? So this isn't my money. This is all money that came from renters renting my properties and giving me, what is it? $11,000 every month, which would be about like that. And then I gladly take their money and I pay the bank, right? I pay the bank. And then I take what's left and I push it into the stock market. 
Now, a lot of this is tax sheltered. So the money coming in there, tax sheltered. I don't pay any taxes on that money. Tax sheltered. I don't pay any taxes on that money. Tax sheltered. I don't pay any taxes on that money. Now, this is an experimental trading account, and I'm testing something on gold with. And I do a lot of that stuff. Trading account. I pay taxes on, on these ones because they're, you know, trading accounts. Now, this one, whenever I get to 75000 I pull it out and take it back to fifty. That's how I pay myself. So I bought a new car, trading, actively trading in the stock market. Because I've now been doing this for so long, I'm able to spot value. That's right out of my book, The Money Flow. And I was able to trade and make enough money to pay cash for a car. Um, I'll have to pay taxes on that money, though. But And so you see, this is 18 years of accumulation. This is not hard. I mean, these are not fancy houses, guys. These are Some of these were actual shitholes until I bought them. I mean, literally, shitholes. And all I did was just work and just save money. I just saved money. I just didn't spend the money. Four things are going to steal your wealth. Taxes. Taxes, right? And what did I just tell you? Tax-free, tax-free, tax-free. Taxes steal people's wealth. Is my wealth being stole to taxes? No, my wealth is accumulating and avoiding taxes. What about on real estate? What about taxes? Well, I get to depreciate the house by, what, 3% a year for 27.2 years, 5 years, right? So if my cash flow on an average house, I try to get two to 300 a month, let's say my cash flow is 300, guess how much I paid in taxes on that? Zero. No taxes. Tax-free, 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 tax-free. So guess what happens now on these, I have 15 properties, but I only have 13 listed here. And let's just say they're worth $2 million. Let's say these houses are worth $2 million, which they are. So I got 15 houses, right? It took me 18 years to do this now. 18 hard-ass, long-working years. Like, just man work. Just grinding it out. Just saving money, grinding it out. Saving money, grinding it out. $100 at a fucking time. Grinding it out. Right? Until I had enough to pay. I would buy about one house a year, if you notice. Why? Because I'm not a rich man. Like, I'm not, wasn't then. I'm, I'm working. I'm hustling, right? So I buy one house with the goal of making 200 to $300 a month so that I can push that into buy one stock, right? So let's take these 15 houses. They're worth $2 million. That's probably a good retail price. Not a fireside price, but a retail price. Houses appreciate 4 to 5% in my area. It's about 5%. What's 5% of a million dollars or $2 million? It's about $100,000. So these, these houses here are appreciating by $100,000 a year. Now, when I had one house, it's appreciating by what? By about $5,000 a year. So on average, a house is going up about $5,000 a year. Now I get it, they go up, they go down. I'm talking about over periods of time. They go up about $5,000 a year per house, right? Or for me, it's $100,000. Am I taxed on this? No. I'm only taxed on this if I sell it. But then I'm not gonna sell it. I'm gonna roll it into a 1031 exchange if I do sell it, roll it into another property and never pay taxes. So I got $2 million, even if I break even, growing my net worth by $100,000 a year. Oh, but we didn't mention cash flow. So on my properties, of the 15, 11 of them are paid for. No mortgage, no bank, no partner, all me, right? And so let's, I mean, what does that come out to? And then I get to depreciate that, right? So I don't pay taxes on that. And so what happens there? Let's just round down. So we got $100,000 coming in just from appreciation on 15 properties. And let's round down and say I only keep $40,000 cash flow. Um, I do have some loans being paid down. We could add that up. I think that comes out to about $15,000 a year loan pay down right now. I have three, you know, I do have three mortgages. Um, oh, and then the dividend stocks. Let's, let's keep that conservative. Let's say $25,000 a year. So this is tax-free, 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 tax-free. Let's add that up. I mean, this is just simple. Guys, I'm just, this is simple blue-collar shit. I didn't go to college. I don't have a degree. I'm not certified to do anything. All I am is a guy that came obsessed with the book, The Science of Getting Rich, became obsessed with buying small, shitty houses and making them nice, became obsessed with accumulating stocks. That's it. This is all I am. Nothing special. 100000 
plus 40,000 plus 15,000 plus 25,000. So what is this? 30, so we got 140. See, I don't, I'm not even good with math, man. 20, that's 45. So that's, what is that, $195,000? Now, that, again, this is perfect math in the future. I'm recording. In the future, so that's $195,000 in net worth increase paying zero taxes. 100 plus 40 cash flow plus loan pay down plus dividends. $195,000 tax-free. Or... You can, none of this is from a job. This is all investments, growing, tax-free. Um, doesn't you say your grandma has some shit to pull to it? Your mom? Lysine or something. Is that all she takes? I thought she had some prescription shit she takes. You could call her and ask her. Okay. I don't know. So... Sorry, I got interrupted there. So all of that starts, all of that starts with one house and one stock. Do you see how this can get exciting? Do you see how the worst thing, and this is 16 grand right here. So think about this, 16 grand is exactly what I put down to acquire this house, my last house, this one right here. I just bought this house right here. 74 gazebo, Huntsville, Texas. It's 750 square feet, one bedroom house. I charge $800 a month. $800 a month. I may have already done this in the beginning. If I didn't, I'm, I'm going to repeat it one more time. That's $200 a month cash flow. That's about almost $200, not quite, in loan pay down every month. And if you depreciate, if you took the, how much the house appreciates, 5%, the example I showed you, it's about average in my name, my area is about, it's actually 4.7, but we'll round up to five. That on a $105,000 asset, that comes out to what? Uh, like $5,000 a year. And so let's, let's keep that on the short side. That's $300 right there to me. None of this is taxed. And so off of my $16,000 down, I'm getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars in net increase. Now, that's not all coming to me in the form of hundred dollar bills, but the cash flow is coming to me in the form of hundred dollar bills. The loan pay down, I don't care what you say, that's money in the bank for me. Okay, the house appreciating, don't care what anybody says, that's money in the bank for me. So let's consider. Five of it's a savings account from house appreciating and loan pay down, and 200 of it's right in my hands, all from a one-time payment of $16,000. So for me to get rid of this big chunk of money, if I get rid of it, they give me that every month. Now I'll begin to multiply it. The 10X rule, Grant Cardone, Uncle G, we begin to multiply it. So my goal is to get to at least 25 houses. And at least 50 stocks paying me all this stuff. And built this empire to where I'm collecting. I want to collect. I'm a uh, simple guy, man. I want to get to $250,000 a year. Passive. When I say passive, you know what I mean by that. I, I'm still going to work and all that. From no job by the time I'm 55 years old. I'm 49 now. And what am I collecting? Right now I'm at, what was the number? Hundred and thirty eight plus the where did I write it? I wrote it over here. So my total right now is a hundred and sixty three thousand one hundred and thirty one from investments. And I'm trying to get to this. I've got six years. Now if you multiply that, what I just showed you, what is my net worth increase gonna be? A hundred and ninety five thousand a year times six years. Now, again, this is all perfect math. I get shit happens, but you got you to gotta base it off of something, right? That comes out to what? 1.2 million? So if I add 1.2 million to all of that, this should easily, easily pass that. You see how I did that? That makes sense? 
Hopefully that makes sense. You see how on the yield curve, if you can just get down here, this is where I'm at. When you have 15 houses throwing you cash and you got 42 stocks throwing you cash and you're still working and you can push this back into the compound curve, guess what happens? It begins to grow exponentially. So next year, think about that. Next year, for my 195,000, the houses appreciate the cash flow that comes in, I reinvest it, this pays down the loan, right? Um, I push all that back in to the game and I'm still working and adding to it. It's a beautiful thing, man. But it all starts with one house, one stock, and you saving a bunch of money.